we're going to jump over to a Windows view of Music Reader so you can see the similarities between the Mac environment and the PC environment in terms of where your uh, Music Reader files are located. I'm going to go here and go into my Documents folder and similar to where the Macintosh, uh, where the Mac OS X creates a sheet music folder within, its, within the Documents folder, we have the same equivalent folder right over here, sheet music over here. You can see my entire library is located this way. Now, if I uh, need to jump directly to a piece and I want to open up the program first, I can do so by simply going here. And I can just jump right into this Sonata. Open that up. And by scrolling by, I can very quickly see the composer the title, the catalog information, the key signature, and all that, and all that good stuff so that uh, this gives me a way of directly opening the music uh, f from within the source file folder. So that's another uh, strong reason for giving detailed names for your pieces as part of the file name. And here we go. This is actually another version I had uh, as part of my CD sheet music collection which I installed on my computer. So there you have it, um, the reason for the long file. Now we're going to take a look at creating music reader files for, um, uh, for more popular songs or for worship leaders. I'm going to take a, take a look at a couple of uh, hymns and to show you the various permutations. And I think this will apply for, for pop musicians as well. Okay, we're back in Music Convert, and now we're going to be working with a couple of uh, worship songs, and specifically, we're going to work in a couple of different versions of a, uh, of a of a hymn called "The Church Is One Foundation." I'm going to show you several versions of this hymn, and how you can label them accordingly. This hymn is located in I just downloaded it from the Reformed University Fellowship website. So let's go to the Downloads folder. You'll notice I'm navigating within. This is within the Windows. Uh, window over here, but you can see I can navigate between my file folders by going up a level here. I can double, uh, and if I want to go back up here, just to show you, this is my user file. These are my user folders. Go to my downloads. I can just double click on that. It brings me to here. I can change the view to a detailed view. So if I want to just see my files according to when it was modified, I can do it that way. Here we go. Churches One Foundation are over here. I'm going to go ahead and open and convert this into a, a music reader file format. Okay, so we just finished converting this to a music reader file. I'm going to go ahead and start naming this, going into the information icon. Instead of the default file name taken from the PDF, I'm going to give it a full name, the Churches One Foundation. And I'm going to give it an additional tag in the title called Lead Sheet. Okay, The composer is I believe his name is Brian Moss. Okay. Now the lyricist is Samuel Stone. If I were just wanted to go back and just check that, yes, that's correct. Okay. And I'm going to put this in as a hymn in the genre. Okay. For the instrument, I'm going to go ahead and leave that blank for now. Actually, maybe we'll just do this. We'll do voice. Okay. Oops, sorry. So used to doing that. Okay. And for instrumentation, I'm going to write this down as lead sheet. Okay. I'm just creating a new category here. Might add, might as well add one more to say voice and guitar. Okay. There you go. I think that'll work. Okay. And this is I'll just for my own information. I'll have this as the REF online hymnal. That's the source for this. Go ahead and return. We can actually save this now. Okay, so now Music Reader is ready to save this file. It's given it the name that I gave it, and uh, also given it a, a, a unique kind of tag number at the end to avoid creating duplicate files. Let's go ahead and save that. And now let's make a new version, or let's convert another file. Go ahead and click on New over here. Go into the File option. And this time, I'm going to select this version over here. Okay. Okay, we've just converted this file, and as you'll notice, this is a different format. Same song, or same hymn, but this is uh, written for a full piano score. So I'm going to go ahead and title that accordingly. The Church's One Foundation, but instead of lead sheet, 
I'm going to call this piano score. Okay. Brian Moss is the composer. The lyricist is Samuel Stone. Okay. This is a hymn. And for instrument, we're going to call it, we're going to give this voice and piano specifically. Okay, so you can see that we can differentiate between them. For instrumentation, we'll just call this piano score. All right, and save it accordingly. All right. Now let's do one more. And this time, we're going to use this version, the same hymn. Okay, we've converted this, but now we're using uh, what's called an overhead format. This is something that can be projected so that um, everybody can follow along with the words and sing together. So we're going to go ahead and kind of label it accordingly. And we're going to call this overhead. Okay, uh, This is Moss. Lyricist is Samuel Stone. Okay. And genre is a hymn. For instrument, we're going to call this uh, choir. Okay. Instrumentation, we're going to just say overhead. I'm just creating a new category that way. And go ahead and save that. And there you have it. So let's go take a look, and I'll show you how the um, how Music Reader's advanced search function can help us quickly find just the right version that we're looking for. Go ahead, click on more. Let's go into Music Reader. Okay, I'm going to just do a half page view. All right, so right now we're looking at the overhead version of this particular hymn. Let's go into our library. And now we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to see, let's just church foundation and let's say lead sheet go ahead and search and there you go see just a couple of words from the title and I can find this version let's go find the piano score if you remember we created the piano score of this so church foundation piano score search for that and there you go okay so those are a couple of uh, examples of how you can differentiate the same piece in different formats. So go ahead and let's clear this search and you should lose your instrumentation just for fun over here and let's type in overhead okay and search for that and you can see all the pieces that we've created as an overhead. This is the only one I've made so far okay but you can start scrolling around all the overhead collections that you have if you want to filter it that way okay. If you want to go ahead and take a look at um, Let's say we're going to take a look at choir as our instrument. See all the pieces you have in your library for choir. These are some of the things I have. I have some mall over here. Here's this church's one foundation again. Okay, so you can see that this library function, this by categorizing your pieces, you can have a very powerful search function that can very quickly um, filter the right version of the songs or the hymns that you're looking for. And this can be applied uh, in a worship leader setting or in a, in a pop music setting. Uh, so I encourage you, as you're creating your music reader files, think through how best you're going to use these songs, how, uh, what are the tags that help you to remember uh, the versions that you're looking for, whether it's the name of the band, the artist, the composer, the, uh, and any other anything else, and try to think of as many different differentiations as you may need as your library grows.